so I started out with this image um, to begin with and I kind of liked it for the purpose of the roots off of it it felt like it was kind of where I would take the idea would be in some directions that I felt that this was very viable and kind of worked I quickly moved on to the idea of the London Underground and mainly focused on how the trains are used uh, and this became kind of a focal point for how I might progress my ideas and basically focusing on mechanics and engineering as a huge factor. So I stripped the idea of a train back and how it interfaces with people and I kind of came up with the idea of this sort of big mechanical beast as such um, and one of the first places I looked into was the idea of sort of steampunk and the idea of steam engines instead of just electrical and so using this I kind of branched out forward into that path. Following on from the previous image of um, sort of steampunk design this image really caught my eye for the way that we can use other methods of transport outside of just trains instead of keeping it just underground why not take that to the next stage and use the idea of like flying and motion but keeping it still around the same idea and theme. One step further from that I looked at the idea of what if humans were machines and the idea of sort of robotics um, through the idea of further less advanced technology um, and the idea of almost robots but not quite sort of was where I was going at this point. Zooming out on the idea that I had around this, I had a look at the environments and how they've been portrayed by multiple artists and it comes down to this very sort of Victorian style of design with sort of very hyper realistic and fantasy aspects on top of that. I wanted to take a reverse idea away from the steampunk and see what something would be complete opposite. Steampunk works on the idea of using sort of mediocre technology to complete its goal whereas I looked at the idea of cyberpunk which uses hugely advanced technology and I love this image as I felt like it captured that perfectly. Going back completely to the drawing board I wanted to have a look at some new ideas um, starting with the idea of an underworld and how this has been portrayed in so many different ways. Uh, this way was the idea of hell um, and the sort of afterlife so this would be, was the starting image that put me on that path. Continuing with this idea, um, I quickly found references to Dante's Inferno and the nine circles of hell that he had to progress through. And I thought this was fantastic because it gave, gave great connotations towards like levels or worlds and it, I just thought it was cool. So another type of mythology that I had to look into was Norse mythology and how that uses um, the same, almost a similar idea of sort of realms or worlds. The idea of having an underworld, having um, some sort of hell, as well as all the sort of shades of grey in between. I thought that was a great way to start some research. One of the common forms of representation in Norse mythology is through the tree, which is Yggdrasil. Um, that shows all of the worlds balancing on the branches and through the roots. Uh, I found this image and I felt like it had strong ties to the way that that might be presented in an underground. Once again, going back completely to the start, I wanted to have a look at underground in the form of sort of dungeons and crypts and this very sort of stone, ominous fashion. Uh, and this was a great image I found that shows a realistic representation of that. I found this image which is um, Elder Scrolls Online's gamification of the idea of a crypt and a dungeon and how that's used to enable players to interface uh, with an environment that feels so real and fresh um, and I felt that was quite an interesting point of view. Following on from the idea of dungeons was the idea of maybe like secrets or things trying to be kept away uh, which led me to the idea of having some sort of library maybe like a secret library uh, which is why I really like this image for the idea of like having knowledge locked away um, forever. Following on from my previous look at 
the idea of having things locked away for a long time it made me think about the way of time and how that might affect uh, aspects underground so I had a look at the idea of being overgrown or maybe sort of enveloped by the earth again so this is what inspired the idea for this image and research so following on from the look at sort of like underground gardens and overgrowth and that idea I had a look at the idea of how that might function or grow uh, through the idea of light uh, so which kind of brings back the idea of fancy which is a full circle for the research that I undertook as I love the idea of underground realms or ecosystems I um, found this image which kind of reminds me like of a vast underground almost entire world based under the world uh, with its own living plants um, and just life in general which I thought was really cool. So in contrast to the idea of having nature take its course underneath the earth I had the idea of what if man-made objects were the focal point for what was grand and impressive so I had a look at the idea of castles maybe underground or underwater even in, as in this image. So finding a compromise between the two ideas of nature and the idea of man-made impressive stonework, I found this image, which were, are the stone trees of Yakutusk, which is a natural formation of stone uh, that I found was quite impressive, the idea of sort of nature and stone being connected. Finally, and following on from my previous idea, I had the look idea of how nature might be carved in stone forever. So the idea of this rose here is being expertly carved to remain infinite. It will never die and it will always stay whole. 